Hey guys, welcome to week 48 of my training vlog. Uh, really, it should, instead of being week 48, it should just be like week 48 workout. So I only actually got in the gym once this week. Really not that big of a deal, but there's just been a lot more issues with my shoulders. Man, I'm starting to run out of some medications and I've been trying to taper off of them, but I'm like really honest, the shoulder is just really sore and I just haven't really felt like it was wise to go out and push it physically when my shoulder is also hurting. What I have been doing this week is I've been trying to walk a lot. So when I was at work this week, I would try to walk everywhere when I was at work, which is actually pretty considerable because where I work, it's pretty geographically separated between everything. So I got a lot of walking in, just not a lot of necessarily like intense training. So today I'm gonna do some belt squats and I figured I'd take you through how I warm up, how I actually set up the belt squat with my trolley arms and see how you guys like week 48. All right, so for warm-ups, I'm mainly just using a hip circle for most of my warm-ups right now. It's just easy to use. Uh, I try to do some rolling and jigsaw massage works okay, but for pre-workout, I really like the hip circle. It works really well. It's funny, I actually bought it for my wife when we first got it and then I tend to use it a ton these days. Uh, but basically just going for like sets of 20 and taking it easy. So enjoy some of the motions here. All right, so real quick, let me take you through what it's like to put shoes on with one hand. So it starts with removing the sling, and then I'm doing my thigh rubs, which are a therapeutic exercise. It feels so good, it relieves a lot of pressure in my scapular region. So I slip it on both feet, the shoes, of course, we're not talking about anything else. So I slip the shoes on both feet, and I kind of do this overhand knot thing with one hand. I try to really limit the use of my uh, left arm. And I actually use my other arm as a brace whenever I have to pull. My grip hasn't really been weak at all. My grip is fine. Uh, but any sort of like outside pulling has to be reinforced. And so you see me tucking my knee in just to give me a little bit of extra comfort. Uh, and so that's how I do both my shoes. And then to keep my sling from starting to stink, I take a towel and I wrap it up around my arm. It does make my arm sweat more, but it makes me not sweat into the sling. And I'm supposed to wear this sling pretty much all the time that I'm not sitting supported or in the shower. All right, so this is kind of how I'm doing belt squat these days. So I have these axle straps from Spud. And what I do is I take this, and this will actually go on the post of the landmine that acts as the rear foot of sorts. But what I have is in the second to last hole on the trolley arm. I have the landmine post, and it actually works really well. I thought it'd be kind of bad, but it, it turns out really well, works out really well. And then I've got, basically I put this one on first, and I start as close as I can to this. Uh, I'll cover that in just a second on why. And then this handle follows this, and then I try to load each side so that there's not like an imbalance or any sort of torque up on the arm and the bushing. It's a relatively low impact lift, and so I, I really think the handles would do just fine. Uh, but this is my belt squat setup, and what I do is, right now is I just take the chain, and I put it through this end hole where the bushing's at, uh, which isn't ideal just because I'm scared of messing up that bushing, but I'm always very careful to pull the slack out very slowly, and then nothing ever like rotates inside of there. Again, not the best, but it works for now. I imagine that in the future I'll, I'll make some sort of attachment point or get some sort of attachment point that works better for that piece. But that's how I set it up. Uh, most of the time I have some of the other guys that train in my gym, some of my teammates, they actually set this up for me. Uh, if they're leaving the gym that night and they know I'm going to be doing belt squats next, I'll ask them to set it up or, or they'll just set it up because they're awesome. But that's the belt squat setup. So that's the belt squat setup. I know it's not the most ideal when I look at products like the Squat Max MD, for instance. 
I really like the idea of that product, but I, I just don't have $900 to spend on one right now. So I'm just using what I have readily available. Also of note, if you are aware of the Soren XJ squad at all, you'll notice that what I'm using is pretty much a, joint, a Soren XJ squad. It's just rudimentary in nature. I reached out to Soren X to see if they would expedite an order and you know no fault to Soren X necessarily but I'm a garage gym owner I service myself plus ha, no pun intended uh, I service myself plus you know maybe three to four different athletes and that's how many people would be using the J squat and they were unwilling to budge from their 12 week quoted build time for the J squat uh, so I just decided not to purchase from them because in 12 weeks I'm going to be outside of my recovery phase and I'm going to be back into being able to do barbell movements. I'm still going to do belt squat stuff now that I've kind of figured out how to do it in my gym. But I just, I don't know, I was kind of turned off. Uh, a lot of companies like Rogue, for instance, I've reached out to them in the past and asked for like small exceptions to their rules and they've been more than willing to accommodate a garage gym athlete and Sorenex was just unwilling they they wouldn't talk to me outside of like hey this is the product this is the lead time you buy it or you don't buy it no fault to them it is what it is they're just their market is larger than a garage gym owner uh, but one of the things I found with my belt squat setup is that standing on those 45 pound plates just that it's about an inch, uh, a little bit more than an inch of clearance. It just helps with getting depth just a little bit more. I don't want to raise the the trolley arm portion any higher because if I do that, I start to get a lot of uh, forward to back movement, a lot of shear force on the knee. Uh, so right where it's at is perfect for going almost straight up and down. Uh, and so I just use the plates just to elevate just a little bit so I can get a, a better range of motion. One of the hardest adjustments for me has actually been getting to getting to a point where I can keep my torso upright. If you look at a lot of the larger pieces of equipment, the Squat Max MD or the Rogue Rhino or the Soren X, no Soren X doesn't have a belt squat, or the uh, Elite FTS uh, belt squat, there's handles that you can grab a hold of. And those handles are nice for being able to keep your torso upright. All right, so we're working up, and basically what I'm looking for right now is like a solid set of five. Uh, that's all I'm looking for. Uh, so what I'm doing is just normal belt squats, concentrating to keep my torso upright, knees tracking over toes, moving quickly, and really just wanting to get to a couple high, heavy sets of five, and then I'm going to switch over to pauses at a lower weight. Alright, so if you watch here, this is my heaviest set of five that I did for the evening. I know it looks like quite a bit of weight. It actually doesn't feel like that much though. It maybe feels equivalent to like uh, maybe a 375 pound squat or so. Just spitballing numbers. But if you watch, you, you watch as I hit the bottom of the movement, my torso just kind of collapses down. Like right there, it was really bad. And... I don't know, it's just kind of a difficult thing to work through. Uh, it's just going to take slowing that movement down, trying to get better at it. So here we have my first set of just pauses. And I'm just kind of slowing it down, like taking a pause in the bottom and shooting back up. Not really worrying about tempo work too much, just going down nice and even, keeping that tension and shooting back up out of the hole. And it went pretty well. I ended up knocking out a set of 10 at this weight. Standing in the place is working nice. Everything's going well. That belt isn't the most ideal. I actually was really hoping to score a multi-belt out of the five ships for five sale from Rogue, but it was out of stock for pretty much all of the times that, that I wanted to buy it. I should have just bought a Rhino, I guess. But if you watch, when I'm slowing down, I have a much easier time keeping my torso a little bit more upright. You can still see some collapse, but a lot of that's just difficulty in trying not to engage my 
my right shoulder at all, just trying to keep that 100% relaxed. It's a conscious decision, for lack of a better word, that I need to make at the beginning of the movement. So after I did that pause set, I decided to go to these 3-1-3 tempos uh, just because I was texting my coach while we were doing this workout, and I was like, hey, so why not? So these are 3-1-3s, and I, I like to think I'm pretty good at the timing portion, actually keeping it 2-3 count and 3 count on the up and down and a good solid pause in the hole. It is difficult to do, though, so something to note. Going to keep working at it, going to keep getting better. Uh, not sure where I'm going to go at with any adjustments to the belt squat, though. I think this is about as good as it's going to get. Maybe just a better way to actually mount the chain to the actual arm. So what do you think? Comment down below. Pretty good setup, pretty not good setup. I don't know. It didn't cost me any extra money from what I've already invested in my gym. All right, so squats are all done. I ended up hitting the air bike afterwards for some 30 seconds work, 20 seconds rest, just some post-workout conditioning. Nothing too intense. Again, I keep on with the air bike. If I go hard, I'll actually like hit my arm with the other air bike handle. And so just not light and easy, keeping it above 400 watts on my work intervals. But 30 seconds work, 20 seconds rest for 10 rounds. But that's week 48, so what do you guys think? Belt squats only right now. Uh, it was recommended for my physical therapist to cut out any of the upper body stuff. Like even if it's completely isolated, just completely cut it out uh, until I'm out of the brace. And even then to work more with my surgeon to actually figure out when I should begin to work in maybe more of the grip. I was doing the hub, the idea of keeping the weight kind of low, but ultimately I just want to get healthy again. So maybe I just hold off on that until recommended. But that's week 48 in the books. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate you guys watching these videos every week. Please watch next week for week 49, and we'll see if anything changes.